Hello and welcome to this episode of the Digital Disruption Podcast brought to you by Novus Strategy and Consulting with Pete Gatenby and myself, Chris Williams. Today's episode, we're going to be focusing on continuous improvement. Continuous improvement, obviously, is something that all organizations want to be able to have, but specifically within the conveyancing arena, which is a highly complex space within the UK, this is not always something that's easy to do and bring technology in. And we've seen over the years how complex this can be. So today's episode is all about how you can continuously improve in the complex arena of conveyancing. Hey, Pete. Hello, Matt. How are we doing? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? All good, all good. Now, I'm quite interested in this one because uh, it's mid-Feb, uh, early part of 2024, and conveyancing the home buying sector has been on a transformation journey for you know, quite some time and continues to go on that journey. But the level of maturity uh, or digital maturity I'm seeing is, 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 is improving uh, at quite some pace. And at recent events, specifically uh, coming back, uh, coming away from the Conveyancing Association event, one thing that's really stood out for me, um, if we look at the, the kind of actors that fall within the conveyancing process from lenders, law firms, vendors to the market, estate agents, brokers, et cetera, et cetera, law firms have always got a bit of stick about being kind of laggards, really, when it comes to yeah. digital or digitalization. Uh, which I think is a little bit unfair. I actually think that at the moment what we're seeing is is a massive shift and a big shift that, you know, conveyances, law firms absolutely want to be adopting digital technology and continuously improve. But the the vendors supplying the market, I feel, have come in and done the very traditional vertical digitalization of, of key component parts but they're actually now not moving quick enough to kind of move to this horizontal state to help um, up the, up particularly conveyances in, in in improving by way of um, kind of joining the process up. And I think for me, where I wanted to kind of start this episode talking about really was on the back of seeing this shift, I guess, where innovation wants to be, especially from law firms, they almost want to drive their own innovation but they need help on how to do it. I wanted to kind of start this episode, I speak off the back of the last one where we talked about um, a value stream mapping, was about assessing digital maturity, bringing in the value stream mapping and kind of how how these businesses can really kind of be, be masters of their own destiny. Obviously, collaboration is important. Everybody needs to kind of come together. Mm. But how can we start to accelerate this transformation? I kind of wanted to start this episode there, really. So I want to put you on the spot and say... How do we start to accelerate this? Because the everybody wants to, you know, everybody in the process is seemingly kind of chomping at the bit, but lacks a sense of direction, I feel. Absolutely. And before I just go into how we can do this, we've seen this before in grocery shopping. Why am I talking about grocery shopping? You're probably wondering. But in years gone by, probably before I remember and, and probably before you remember as well, is to do the weekly shop, you would have to go to the bakery, you'd have to go to the butchers, you'd have to go to the fishmongers, you'd have to go to the grocery store um, to get all your individual components before you could come home with your weekly shop. Then what happened was a big shift in the market where supermarkets came along and they created a, a central point where all of these different parts of the shopping process, if we were to call it that, were, 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 were contained within, in one, within one roof. We're not there in the conveyancing space yet. That verti vertical um, components that you're talking about is the weekly shop where you go visit the fishmonger, you go visit the butcher, you go visit the uh, um, the grocery store, and then you come home and you and you have all your components. Now, that's all well and good, but it takes time. It's it's costly. It's complicated, right? You have to know where each of these individual shops are. You have to know where the best grocery store is, where the best uh, butcher is, where the best fishmonger is. To, to make sure you get the, the, the highest quality products that you, you might want. And that's exactly what's happening in the conveyancing space at the moment. They have to understand so many and have relationships with so many different vendors uh, very and so many different contractual agreements that it, it becomes hard for the internal teams within the conveyancing organizations to be able to manage that. And so their day-to-day -day operations become less about managing the value stream map, as we talked about uh, on the last episode, but more about relationship management or actually, in truth, 
navigating issues that mm. sometimes happen. Yeah. And we've all been there, right? When you've got many, 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 many different moving parts. Moving parts, it becomes complex quick. So how do we improve that? Naturally, we talked about the value stream mapping process last 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 week. And that's exactly the start point. And this is really where the true innovation happens, is identifying how to link these together, where you're lacking maturity, and map the maturity of this process and all your different components that that, that make you an organization that, that operates day to day. Um, and, and, and you begin to identify how you're scoring on each of these. Once you identify how you're scoring, you can then identify where the points of improvement need to be. And those points of improvement might be changing your uh, contract with your current vendor for A, B, C. Or it could be changing the process that you go about internally. Or it could be linking two parts of the process together. It, it could be a myriad of different things. But once you understand that, yeah. you can then begin to take the prioritization t- steps. One of the panels I, I listened to recently at an event, there was a, a, a person that said, I articulated this very well, They and they were a vendor to, into the, the home buying market. They simply said, we've made this very complicated. We did a good job of digitalizing it, but there's just, yeah. too, there's just too much stuff and we need to simplify it. And that's really important. And of all of the people that were talking, I saw a lot of people going on, basically telling, you know, rather than showing. And this one individual, I thought, you know, really stood out to me because I thought, you know, you're absolutely right. And I guess that's what you're saying is, is we, 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 we've got to simplify this. Mm. Um, and I guess when we work with organizations, that's essentially what we're trying to do is kind of, you know, simplify things and, and make it easier. So let's look at, like how we go about doing that. I mean, we've you've just spoken there about the value stream stuff, which we talked about in the last episode. And I think anybody that's kind of landed on this and watching this episode, I'd encourage them to go back and listen to that because that's that's a key yep. one. Digital maturity is an important, and there's different ways of measuring digital maturity. But if you can find, we obviously have got our our, our digital index, which is which effectively is designed to help organisations benchmark where they are today versus where it is that they need to be. It's far less about saying you need this particular product in this particular area to do this particular thing. It's more of a holistic view, isn't it? And I think when I look at organizations trying to measure their digital maturity, I believe they come at it through the wrong lens sometimes. They start with the value stream map, trying to look at where, you know, let's just say there's 20 there's, there's 20 things that need mm. to happen in, in a process and say 10 of those things have got digital are digitalized in some way, the, the, the rest of it is, and the other 10 aren't. They then say, oh, well, we're 50% digitally mature. We'll go and get these other 10 things, and that'll make the world better. That's not a, that's not assessing your digital maturity. And I think one of the things I'd like to kind of get across is digital maturity is a holistic view of your organization. It's from the perspective of, yes, tech and how you're leveraging technology, but how's your organization configured mm-hmm. in terms of people, your ways of working, uh, how, how are you integrated into partners? How do you adopt technology? How do how, you recruit? How do you recruit? Yeah. All of these things are maturity. Uh, there's maturity levers that you can kind of look at that all link back to digital. And I think that's something to kind of, I'd, I'd like to touch on a little bit. So you do a lot of our digital maturity assessments. Obviously, you designed the, the yep. NDI. How should organizations be kind of approaching this? Great. So the first thing is to obviously assess each of the areas and understand and map your maturity across each of the pillars. That's kind of step number one. We do that a lot. We've got a process we follow, stakeholder reviews, et cetera, et cetera. What are those pillars? Because given what I've just sort of said, what, 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 let, let's give people those kind of pillars where, where you really should be, what you should be looking at. So there are seven pillars, six what we call lead metrics or lead pillars, um, and one lag. Now, I will explain the difference first and foremost. Lead is something that you can control and lag is very much the result of all the things you do. So our lag uh, metric or lag pillar that we talk about is stakeholder engagement. We call it that, but it encompasses your customer experience, your internal stakeholder uh, relationships, how they experience um, working and using your digital tools. It's, It's a result of everything that you do digitally. Now, then the six lead uh, pillars or lead metrics that we we measure across are, first of all, digital business strategy. Uh, Second of all, agile innovation. How do you innovate? 
Thirdly, culture and people. So looking at the culture of the business and the people that you have within the organization. Fourthly is business alignment. How well aligned is the business in terms of delivering technology, in terms of aligning to your strategy, et cetera, et cetera. Risk and compliance is number five. Obviously, hugely important in our market, given the, the, the highly regulated industry that we exist within, the home buying space. And then uh, sixth, and absolutely not, 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 not the least important, one of the most important, is digital capabilities. How capable are you digitally? Do you have digital teams that can deliver, or do you rely on outsourcing? And how does that stack up to, to actually deliver against your requirements digitally? So when you take all of those things yep. and we go in and, or you self-assess and, and you look at it, the, 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 what's the end result of, of these sorts of assessments and how does that directly correlate to, one, the benchmark of where you are and that then feeding into something like value stream mapping to develop a roadmap? Absolutely. So you end up with a score across each of these areas um, that is one to five, quite simple. Um, five is good, one is bad. It's super simple. Uh, once you know where you are on that scale, you can then start to plot a route for improvement. Now, how we do this with them is we recommend work streams or recommend uh, activities that might improve that. So a really simple example would be if you don't have, if you're scoring low on uh, digital capabilities, it could be that you actually don't have anyone internally within your organization who's responsible for anything digital. It's not on someone's Someone's thing. So a really quick one for that would be make it someone's job, yeah. right? And so that would be a recommendation that might, might come out of that. Just, just on that, though, I think there are some businesses that get worried about that because of their size and they think, yeah, mm. but we don't have a, but, you know, I don't have somebody that's, you know, fit, would fit the category of the role of CTO. And I think it's important for uh, people to understand that it's not necessarily about that. It, somebody can still own something but not necessarily have what you would deem the skill, a, a particular skill set because this is where collaboration comes in but when somebody owns something and, and they start to learn because this is a learning exercise isn't mm. it you, you can start to fill the gaps and then start to plan how do we plug those gaps and I think that's the big thing about maturity assessments for me and when I look at some of the maturity assessments that exist not 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 necessarily in this market but you know just just generally overall a lot of them don't necessarily focus on helping organizations to kind of go from current state to future state and deliver the how mm. it's just more of a you know, you scored low there. Yeah. But let, let's kind of help you get better. And that's that's really the key, right? Because there's a thousand different ways to win a football game. But how you position your your team on the pitch and how they go about scoring a goal will vary from your your slightly more successful football team than mine, Liverpool versus Bradford City, right? <laughs> like, we go about things different ways with varying degrees of success. But there's always someone responsible for scoring the goals. Yeah. There's always someone responsible for making sure the other team doesn't score goals. Um, and, and so it's, it's all about understanding that. Now then, once you understand where you're lacking, now I can tell you where Bradford City are lacking at the moment, we're letting more goals in than we're scoring, then we can start to identify how we improve that. And that's exactly what our assessment does, mm. is once you understand where you are today, you then make recommendations of how to move forward and do things better tomorrow. So bring this all the way back now to the, I guess, the continuous improvement topic continuous improvement comes from lean um, lean manufacturing principles but in the context of digital innovation mm. you know we always want to be improving all oh, but forget being about digital innovation really I mean all organizations want to be continuously improving in some ways striving to be better to deliver better customer experience yep. drive higher margins you know I think in the uh, well it's not it's not I mean, this is common knowledge. The conveyancing space, law firms especially, are you know their their margins are constantly being hit. There's constantly more that they that they're being asked to do, mm. um, and it's very difficult. One of the things I noted um, the other week, listening to some uh, law firms talking on a panel, was that this constant pressure to you know deliver yeah. more, yeah, almost. almost with less. And I think this is where this really comes into its in, into its own, really. Well, exactly that, because you create what I like to call an innovation backlog. Mm. And you, you end up with a list of activities and improvement work streams that can be um, picked away at, picked up, activated upon, delivered until you go to the next one. Now, that sounds quite software development. Of course, we're, we're from product backgrounds. Well, this, is, this is how 
these things get delivered quickly. But I think this comes back to the point earlier about the importance of of having a good maturity index to follow, because actually this, the, you know, the business improvement things, it, it, this is what it's about. It's about yeah. being able to holistically understand how your business model might need to evolve and change. Absolutely. Because you, whilst we're in a regulated environment, to, you know, evolving your business model, understanding where you can bring in automation and, and changing that. Actually, this, this is where innovation starts to happen. This is where transformation happens. I mean, you've, I, I wax lyrical about this. There's a major difference between change and transformation. Change yeah. is building a better version of the past. Transformation is fundamentally reimagining what we do today in a different way to improve things for the better. Yeah. And I think that everybody in this industry space wants to be in the transformation train, not on mm. the change train. They're kind mm. of like, look, look, everybody's up for this. And hopefully this this is certainly an episode, I hope, that kind of helps people to kind yeah. of get their mindsets and, and gives them some tools to do that. And I think this is where value stream, digital index, this is where this stuff really matters. 100%. And, and what we are seeing more and more with the people that I'm working with is they're introducing people who are either innovation leads or transformation leads. Their responsibility is to identify where the improvements need to be made. Mm. Once there's someone with that responsibility, they then need a framework to follow. The, the framework is understand your process end to end, understand where you sit on a maturity matrix, create a backlog of, of, of improvement activities, score them, and then pick off the highest value first and then repeat the process. And that's your roadmap, isn't that it? That is your roadmap, yeah. And that almost sounds overly simplified, but actually it it is it is that simple, isn't it, really? And I the, think... The hardest thing we're seeing is... and what, So the hardest thing is having someone responsible for it. And the big shift that we're starting to see, especially in the conveyancing market, in the market we talk about, is that people are actually starting to be tasked with this job. Hmm. And I guess the one thing I want to, 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 to leave with these people is like, this is this is the approach you should be following. Um you need something to follow the, a maturity assessment that's applied to your market. But you then need to take that and create and, and, and work with specialists to create the work streams and the, the, the improvement activities that you can then prioritize and, 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 and check off. We're starting to close this. I mean, we could talk about this for yeah. a long time. Um, and, you know, I always kind of come to the end of these episodes thinking is this the more that we can give, but we like to keep them kind of yeah. to within a, a certain time frame so that, 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 that people can absorb them. But a big question, the usual PG tips <laughs> that we got at the end, what are your kind of key takeaways for people to, to, to look at this from a continuous improvement standpoint in terms of steps they can follow? Well, the first one, and, and this sounds like a, a, a plug, but it's, it's not really. Um, we've developed an index that's focused on this industry for this reason. It's free. We don't ask you to do it with us, exclusively with us or anything of that nature, but it is focused on the home buying space. So go and download it. Once you've done that, you can self-assess. Now, of course, we do engagements with this. We do this with people and it's quite detailed, but you can self-assess. Once you've got that, then you can start to build out these, the, the, the roadmap. So that's tip number one. Find an assessment that's that's focused on the market. Tip number two is activate upon that. Do it. Execution is key. execution. An assessment is fine, great. Tells you one, tells you how you're doing. But if you don't then do anything with that knowledge, you see, you, you, you no transformation or change will happen. Mm. So you then got to execute upon it, which really is 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 the biggest tip that we can give. I'm only gonna have two tips this week, unless you want to add a third, but I'm having two. No, I'm not gonna. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not gonna interject as I normally would and throw in a, a third, a fourth, or a fifth, or whatever else. I do think that. I think closing out. I think it's they're, they're, they're great tips. You know. I guess the invitation is is to all organisations out there, is is, is just do is, is get on with this. Yeah. You know, own it, get it done. Uh, if we can help, reach out. But yeah, of course, this is such an important. They're important frameworks and they're in fundamental foundations that are going to make you robust and scalable as you go on these transformation journeys and try to yeah. accelerate that. Um, so with that, Pete, as ever, thank you for your wisdom and expertise in, no, thank in, you. in, 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 in this episode. And that does conclude uh, this week's episode of the Digital Disruption Podcast. We hope you found it valuable and insightful. And as ever, if there are any questions that you have in relation to any of the things that we've discussed, please don't hesitate to reach out. 
uh, and ask those questions directly to us. But for now, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you again soon. See you soon.